What's going on, everybody? It is March 7th, Wednesday slate, and it's a uh, one. Uh, FanDuel is not including the 7 o'clock game, so yay for me, uh, 8 o'clock lock. Not as awesome for DraftKings, uh, where they have the standard 7. I mean, they have multiple slates, but uh, DraftKings does have the option of the, of the 7 o'clock slate, or at least I think they do. Yeah. So... Um, you know, we're looking at six games for FanDuel, seven games for DraftKings. Last night, um, uh, ate a bunch of dongers. It was uh, not great. I'm not even unhappy about it. Uh, down a bundle in the shop machine. Uh, this would be my best lineup, um, which is fine. But, you know, it was uh, a blip on the radar, comparatively speaking, to the rest. Uh and I'll go over why. So this is the top 100 lineups on FanDuel. Um, first up, 90% of the top 100 lineups have Tyler Johnson. This is the person I had zero of and had no expectation of rostering. Uh, not even just, I was like, he just, he was never even in consideration to fill in a single lineup, let alone 100. Um, so there's that, which, you know, is just lovely. Tyler Johnson played 38 minutes last night. After playing 18 in the previous game, not playing for two games, and playing 22 minutes uh, in the game before that. So, didn't think that he, he was going to get ramped up to 38 minutes so quickly, yet here we are. Uh, Yogi Ferrell, uh, turns out I was a day early, or a game early. Um, I had him a bunch here against New Orleans uh, once he was named the starter, and they said Wes Matthews was out. Uh, he went for eight. Uh, turns out I needed to get him here. When he went for 35. You know, you could easily reverse those games. There's no real difference. Uh, and then the rest was just a smattering of Dennis Smith, Steph, Van Vliet, Paul. Uh, my biggest problem um, was probably at point guard. Well, point guard and small forward. Um, I felt as though... Let me scroll back up to the top. Uh, I felt as though... Um, Kyle Lowry was going to be the uh, the safest bet for me. <laughs> um, the lesser of the evils. I'm, I'm happy. I very specifically avoided, avoided Kemba Walker. Uh, Kemba went for 20. Um, he was a guy that was picking up a lot of steam, but I really, really hated that matchup. So I'm glad I got away from that. Um, and then I just didn't see enough differentiation between Westbrook, Curry, Lillard, and Paul had me nervous. Uh, so I thought Lowry, at the very least, you know, Toronto would smack Atlanta. I thought that Lowry had a low f or a high floor. No, he dove right through that. Uh, 22 minutes. He was uh, he didn't shoot a free throw, which is great. Two for six from the field. Six field goal attempts, which I'm looking at it now just to make sure. Okay, so I'm assuming he got hurt in this game. But, uh, yeah, that's the second lowest total of free th or field goal attempts on the season. Uh, Hawks were getting, or Hawks were beating them for a decent chunk of the game. That just couldn't have gone any worse for me. Uh, Rondo was fine. Uh, you know, Moutier was terrible. Just, I need to really avoid him now. The Knicks are non-trustworthy. And then Teodosic was nothing special. Um, at shooting guard, I had 40% uh, of Drew. He was in 100% of these lineups. All over that one, completely happy. I also had a ton of Lou Will and a ton of Beal. Um, uh, shooting guard was the place that I thought that it was safest to pay up. Um, I didn't have much Wade. Uh, again, I didn't, I didn't see him as a situation where it was going to be crazy. You know, now that they were playing Luke Babbitt a little bit more, this was a back-to-back. -back. Uh, Wade wasn't somebody that was ever really on my radar. But, you know, I had three of these top guys, so shooting guard I was happy with. Small forward, you know, I'd, I was willing to bet on Durant and Paul George, and I figured at least one of them would be decent. Turns out neither one of them show up in the top 100. You needed a ton of Bobby Covington and Eton Moore. Um, this is a place where I probably am going to learn a little bit of a lesson in that I wasn't necessarily wild about Durant or Paul George. 
I mean, a little bit on Paul George, less so on Durant. Um, but they were so far and away um, ranked higher than everything else at small forward that I thought, you know, this is, I don't have much of a choice here. And in those scenarios, I think I need to just play the, play the odds game and invest a little bit more down the line uh, compared to just the concentration, if I'm not feeling it. Uh, I think I forced this one a little bit. It's one of my only regrets. Power forward, AD. Uh, I was heavier on AD than uh, the field was, so I'm, you know, I'm very happy there. Uh, I wish I would have had more Tobias Harris. I liked him in the morning, just didn't end up there because of uh, salaries elsewhere. Um, I had an okay amount of Harrell, but not nearly enough. Um, at power forward, I had a decent amount of Dwight Powell and Millsap. Millsap, um, I couldn't be happier with. You know, Dwight Powell was fine. Uh, I managed to avoid any major craters here, so I can, I'll take it. And then this one's the best one. Center, uh, because obviously um, Dwight Howard was going to go off. Um, who didn't see that coming? I disregarded Howard completely. He's been dinged up, uh, hasn't been playing very well. Uh, salary's been plummeting. Didn't think that this was a very good spot. You know, came in, uh, came in and, you know, played 30 minutes. Really efficient from the field. Uh, got a bunch of blocks and steals and put up value. Um, I was heaviest on, <laughs> god damn. Uh, I was heaviest on DeAndre Jordan, <clears throat> who hit 4.6x, which, you know, is fine. And then uh, my second biggest guy was Whiteside, who played 21 minutes. Expected a lot more out of Whiteside, <clears throat> especially in that particular game, which ultimately went to overtime, uh, how Whiteside played 21 minutes and took six shots or something, I'll never know. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. Let me clear this really well. My bad. Um, yeah, I, I would have never been on Deadmond. Uh, big ups to my chat for uh, calling this Nerlens Noel game. Um, I didn't have him playing near 25 minutes or uh, being as efficient as he was, <clears throat> but turned out to be a very good value play. Um, I was low on his minutes. Uh, he wasn't highly rated at Osimo's website. Um, Fantasy Cruncher was low on him, so you know I felt pretty good about my stance, but turns out that was wrong. But if you're going to be getting Deadman, Noel, you know, Jakob Pertl makes sense, Okafor, small amount of Cantor, and JaVale, like, the amount of good centers that were useless tonight is nuts. Embiid, awful. Jokic, awful. Capella, awful. Whiteside, awful. Nurkic, awful. Jared Allen, awful. O'Quinn, awful. Like, it's, what are you going to do? So... While I'm un a little unhappy about the decision-making at small forward, I don't really mind my Lowry play in hindsight, um, especially in a GPP scenario where it could have been a little bit different. He was only like 5% owned. But that's just a weird night. So I'm ready to play another night and, and dive into this one. Six games on the slate for FanDuel, seven for DK. Let's do this. Uh, so first game up for the DK crew, uh, Pacers and Jazz. Pacers with a 99.75 implied total, which is 14th. Um, this game's awful. I, I couldn't be happier that it's not on the FanDuel slate. Um, one, it gives me the extra hour after lock, so I don't have to rush home. Two, uh, it sucks. Pacers Jazz is a fun game to watch um, from like a basketball perspective, but it's very clearly the worst game from a fantasy perspective, so I'm happy that it's shaved out of my uh, player pool. So let's take a look at the positions here. Um, for Indiana, you know, it's mid-tier for Corey Joseph. Uh, not the best matchup for Oladipo. Um, Utah has been death to small forwards, which does not bode well for Bojan. Um, Thad is in the lower chunk. Only place where you see anybody with a decent matchup and we've talked about this in the previous video, um, would be uh, Miles Turner on Gobert. And I know people are going to freak out about that that haven't heard me talk about this, but 
Gobert's a really good team defender. Um, he negatively impacts everything that happens for the Pacers across the board. It doesn't necessarily mean that he focuses, in particular, defending Miles Turner. So Turner is something I, somebody I would be interested in. Also, I don't know which direction I'm supposed to point. I'm really bad at like mirrors and reversals. So I used to be over here, or I'm over here right now, but I switched because most of my stuff is over here now, and I'm not entering anything on the tiers section. You guys don't know where I'm pointing, but I'm pointing at my spreadsheet. So just assume that I was pointing in the right direction. Okay, Corey Joseph is a D plus, 4,900. Um, I'm not super interested in Corey Joseph. I don't think the matchup is really there. Uh, I, I don't see a ton of upside. This doesn't seem like a game where Corey Joseph is just going to go ham. Jazz don't seem to be the type of team that would let somebody go ham. Ooh, one last thing. Uh, I don't have the... Cleaning the glass stats today, because uh, cleaning the glass was down when I loaded all of the stuff up. So there you go. Um, so really, I want to focus on Oladipo, who is 8,300 on DK and gets a B rating. And now it's not the best matchup for him, um, but he's coming off three games at 40 or higher. You know, had a down game in the back-to-back, -back, but now is getting a day's rest. It is a home game. Uh, so on DK, I really don't have much of a problem with Oladipo. I think Thad Young is properly rated there. Um, I don't like the matchup. <clears throat> and uh, you're going to, you know, he, he went for 30 here in 39 minutes. He needs every bit of those minutes to get to that scoring. Um, and against the Jazz, it's, it's a really hard bet to make. The one guy I do want to look at is Turner. Uh, 5,600 on DraftKings. He's a straight C for me right now, and I'm actually going to bump him up uh, just a little bit uh, for the defensive matchup. Where is he? Okay. Um, so I want to give him a, a 2% boost there. Uh, I think that that is uh, a really good sneaky play. No real change for him, but I don't think a lot of people will be on Turner too much tonight. Uh, because of Gobert, and I think there's some value in that. Now for Utah, we've got Donovan Mitchell at 7,300, which is a B. Um, we'll take a look at their defensive matchups. So point guard uh, against Indiana has been really rough this year. Um, seven duds. Nobody has really gone crazy. But shooting guard hasn't been bad. Uh, it's actually not a bad spot. Um, so I'm going to say that because of the way that Donovan Mitchell splits his time, he's kind of in between both of these, so I don't see really any changes to make there. I am, however, going to knock down Rubio a little bit. You know, some of that was built on the back of uh, Darren Collison, but Corey Joseph is a solid defender as well, so I don't see much of a difference for it. Um, so let's get down here to Utah. Just in case anybody is thinking about taking uh, Ricky Rubio, this should really cement the fact that you don't need to graded out as a D plus. I think Mitchell's okay. Um, I obviously liked him a little bit two nights ago, or last night, yeah, two nights ago. Um, played 41 minutes, but only got to 36 points. Just had a rough shooting night, um, and Orlando didn't exactly come to play. Uh, this one should be a bit more competitive, I think. Um, I think Mitchell has a much better chance. He feels pretty safe for me. Um, again, Joe, Joe Ingles uh, at six, well, 5,900. I was rounding up. Um, that's probably not for me, but let's finish off those positions. So Utah, you know, not the best spot here for Ingles. Nine duds. Um, so I, I think it's safe to avoid him. And then Favors in the middle of it all. And Gobert towards the bottom. Uh, Pacers have been... Uh, pretty difficult to go at from the center position. Um, so that does make me want to neuter uh, Gobert a little bit. Um, yeah, there's not much to like. Look, it's a, it's a low-scoring game. Um, Indiana has what I would call the worst matchup. Utah, uh, third from the bottom. It's not a place to focus, in my opinion. Which is great, because I won't be. 
only on DraftKings. Sorry, DraftKings. You guys have those people. Now, um, I don't even know how to talk about this game. Chicago Bulls hosting the Grizzlies. There's not a line out right now. I've got the Bulls favored by five at home. Uh, you can probably just roll two dice and uh, two die. Yeah, I think that would be the way to say it. Whatever. And um, pick a line and you'd be fine. None of it matters. Big takeaway here. Uh, the league uh, reached out to the Bulls and let them know that they were not happy about the resting of Robin Lopez and Justin Holiday, even though they're healthy. So Robin Lopez and Justin Holiday are probably going to play a little bit tonight. Uh, so what that does is, in this case, removes 20 minutes from the potential playing of everybody else on the team. And who the hell knows who's going to be trying and who's not going to be trying. This game is an embarrassment. <laughs> it sh they should just cancel it or they should play each other head to head. They should line up 12 TVs, 12 PlayStation 4s. Everybody plays their other position one-on-one -on -one in NBA 2K, and whoever plays, whoever gets the most wins gets credit for it because nobody gives a shit about this game, and it would be a lot cooler if they just played video games or something. Um, this game is seriously an abomination. Zach Levine is a B-minus on both. He's 6,800 on FanDuel and 6,700 on DK. This is coming off a game where he had 12 fantasy points and had 28 in the two previous. It's hard to like him, especially if you know Robin Lopez and Justin Holiday are going to be back. Um, let's take a look at the Bulls, who should have a decent matchup at, at the very least. You know, mid-tier um, overall. Chris Dunn, near the bottom, good to know. Zach Levine, slightly above average. Small forward is in the middle of the pack. Uh, Markinen is slightly above average. And then uh, center, whoever the hell that may be for the Bulls, worst matchup uh, on the board. If you guessed this game right, good for you. Um, I'm going to knock Dunn down a little bit. It's not going to matter much if I touch Felicio or Robin Lopez. But, I, I mean, I don't trust Zach Levine. I don't trust David Nawaba. Uh, Markin in at 5,800 against a team that's not really the best at stopping threes or stopping power forwards. Um, I think that he could be an okay sort of mid-tier value spot. Uh, I would expect Markinen to get run regardless. Um, he's one of the few guys that I would be comfortable with here. I know I go crazy on him <clears throat> from time to time. This one's a little different. I just think he's functional in a group of guys that are less than functional. But it'll you know it'll be nice to get some news for this game to see if anything else changes. But for right now. I just can't imagine wanting to have parts of this and cheer for it. Um, I'll have bites at Markinen and, you know, probably a tiny, tiny bit of Chris Dunn or Zach Levine. But, I mean, what do you, what, it's just, I'm, I'm done. I'm talk, I've talked too much about it. And then we get the Grizzlies. Uh, I've got them at a 101 implied total, which is 12th. Oddly enough, that would be still higher than the Pacers and Jazz scoring if you need some perspective. Um, there's no telling who's going to be healthy and who's not. It doesn't appear that we, well, we won't be seeing Andrew Harrison or Mario Chalmers. So the backcourt is going to be run by Kobe Simmons and Xavier Roth and Mays, uh, the latter of which I don't know who he is. Um, I know they just signed him. I had to add him to my depth chart today. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he's not really feasible. I know he played, you know, two nights ago. Didn't have him at that point. Um, certainly didn't have him ready for 26 minutes. 
but you know it's Xavier Roth and Mays, Kobe Simmons, Mike Henry. I don't. This team is like, one of the worst I've ever seen. If it wasn't for like their culture, which may or may not be good at this point, I, I wouldn't. I'd, they, they wouldn't win a game. It's probably the reason that they haven't really been winning all that much. I believe they're on a really ridiculous, yeah, 14 straight, which if you look at that roster, you think to yourself, I wonder why it's not more than 14. Um, they are absolutely dreadful. B- minus for Marc Gasol, is that any good? Yeah, so Marc Gasol's got a decent matchup. Um, I'm going to bump him up a little bit. I, much to my chagrin. But, you know, don't feel excited about it. Um, who knows about Jarrell Martin? Um, you know, I'm, I'm expecting Ben McLemore to play, but he didn't play in the last game. Uh, just don't, just don't play this game. Just treat it, move that, to, move that game to seven o'clock. Treat it like it doesn't exist. Pistons. 103.5 implied total is 11th. Uh, they are five and a half point underdogs at home against the Raptors. Raptors on the back-to-back -back after yesterday's Hawks game. Now we can actually talk about a game where teams should, you know, play like they're real, even though uh, the Pistons suck and are likely not going to make the playoffs. That's something I need to bring up. Uh, 538 NBA. So that's going to be relevant for discussions um, moving forward. So the Pistons right now have a 4% chance of making the playoffs per 538. They're still trying for now. First up is Andre Drummond. 10,000 on FanDuel, 9,500 on DK. Actually, let's look through position-wise. So Ish, um, just slightly above average matchup. Reggie Bullock, or shooting guard, is bottom of the barrel. Small forward is bottom of the barrel, but a lot of that probably has to do with Ananobi, who I do have as back for right now. Blake running into a just absolutely terrible matchup. And Drummond is slightly below average. Nothing crazy, just nobody has gone uh, absolutely nuts against them. Um, so let's go up to the Pistons here. I want to knock Blake down quite a bit. I want to knock uh, Reggie Bullock down right a, quite a bit, James Ennis down quite a bit, Stanley Johnson down quite a bit. Um, that makes me feel pretty good there. Only guy I want to look at is probably Drummond now. Um, and even that might be a little too aggressive, but I see a little bit of a bounce back here. Let's see what Drummond's history has been uh, recently against the Raptors. Went for 61 uh, a couple weeks ago, 58 early. I think, especially with the way that Drummond um, played 5 of 5 from the field, 5 of 5 from the line, but just not shooting enough in that last game. And with the way that uh, this shouldn't be a game that is, accentuates Blake's best. Um, Raptors take away the three, which is, you know, not something that matters for Drummond. I'm actually pretty comfortable with Drummond. Um, he does look like a really good center option for me. Um, you know, obviously a bunch of games to go. Uh, let's see where he ranks relatively before we get into the rest of it. Yeah, I can see myself with a, a very healthy amount of Andre Drummond tonight, uh, especially with only six games to choose from and really only five. Um, yeah, Blake, I'm going to avoid, or at least mostly avoid. Um, he's been playing well in these last two, but getting the Raptors here, um, I feel like the Raptors are going to want a little bit better of a performance, but defensively they're just really solid. And with the way that they've just destroyed power forwards, you know, 11 dud games, this does not look like a game where Blake should be uh, slammed. That takes me out of Bullock. Um, I think that Ish is fine on DK. 
Uh, that 4,900 price point is, is okay. He's back up into the 30 minutes, so you don't need him to go crazy. I think he's a decent value spot. And then I'm not looking to flip any coins on like James Ennis any longer. Uh, when he was minimum salary or whatever on DK, it was a little bit more palatable. Uh, Raptors. 109 implied total is 8th. Uh, middle of the pack in terms of matchup overall, but Pistons defense has been pretty bad lately. Um, so Lowry, <laughs> mad at you. Wanted more. Uh, middle of the pack for point guard matchups. Um, DeRozan, though, running into a pretty tough matchup defensively. Six duds. Nobody's gone crazy against them. So something to keep in mind. Uh, Malcolm Miller or OG Ananobi, depending on uh, whoever it is, is um, right here in the middle. It's probably Ananobi for me. But it doesn't really matter. Not a crazy good matchup. And neither of those guys are guys that I really want. Um, then we have Surge uh, right right in the middle of everything here. Nine big games, but five duds. Uh, seems like a GPP thing for me. And then uh, slightly decent uh, matchup for Jonas. I'd like to see how he has done um, in this Drummond history. Played 22 minutes and was nothing in the most recent game, and then played 27 minutes back in January and uh, went pretty nuts. So, again, probably just a GPP guy. Only guy I'm going to knock down is probably DeRozan. Yeah. Um, so DeRozan is 8,000 on FanDuel, 7,500 on DK. I'm going to bet on that 5x5 five five, uh, defensive information. Um, he's also not been going absolutely crazy, and that's sort of what I'd be looking for. Um, is he probably safe to not dud? Yeah, I think so. But I don't see a, a giant game out of him. Lowry at 7,700. C minus D plus, just not good lately. Um, playing at a level 32 fantasy points um, with his fantasy points per minute. So even just this year, I I'm, I'm very comfortable with where I have him projected. Um, it wouldn't shock me if he had a really solid game, but... You know, I'm going to take uh, last night as a bit of a sign. I'll probably end up recording a video Thursday morning where I say, looks like I was a day early on Kyle Lowry. Serge Ibaka, straight Fs. His price is just too high. Uh, 5,600 and 5,300. Um, you can get him up to this 38-point range, as you can see. But uh, his downside is in the teens, and that's a lot to take. I don't mind him as much in GPPs, but uh, I don't find him to be very safe in cash. Um, Van Vliet, hyper-efficient again last night. 33 fantasy points in 29 minutes. Um, that was sort of the game that we were expecting. You know, you had this chunk of guys here, and I guess Malcolm Miller to a degree, um, where I wasn't necessarily comfortable grabbing any of them, but... They obviously had some value. Their second unit is incredible. The Hawks, you know, should get eaten alive on that second unit. Um, it was just hard to figure out who I wanted to invest in. Uh, it looks like Van Vliet and Pirtle were the two uh, best options. Pirtle with 32 fantasy points in 21 minutes. Uh, this is just a really good game. Um, they were all pretty much fine except for Siakam. Uh, so for me... Um, I'm comfortable still having, you know, a uh, couple bites at Van Vliet. But for the rest of it, you know, you got to roll the dice and hope for the best. Uh, Pistons give up a ton of threes. So, you know, I would lean towards CJ Miles again, um, especially at minimum salary on FanDuel. And if OG Ananobi gets scratched, um, I would say that CJ Miles looks even better. Um, Let's see, small forward. I'm actually going to give CJ Miles a little bit of a boost just because of the style of game. Um, 
he's going to bomb threes, and that, that fits this game narrative. So if you see that OG Ananobi is out, you'll probably likely see uh, my ratings for CJ Miles go up. Now, this should be a fun game. Uh, Bucks hosting the Rockets. Bucks with a 105 implied total, which is 10th. They're six point underdogs uh, against the Rockets at home. Um, you know, slightly below average matchup. Rockets are actually sneaky good on defense. People just don't realize it because they score so much. I mean, most people. Um, but Rockets on the back to back, coming off a an OKC game, which is you know never going to be easy on the body. So I'm interested in looking at uh, the Bucks here. Go through the positions quick. Uh, point guard is slightly below average. We know that. Um, shooting guard near the top. Unfortunately, you would want that to be like Malcolm Brogdon and not Tony Snell. So hard to uh, grab a lot of value out of Tony Snell. Uh, middle of the pack for Middleton. Middle of the pack for Giannis, depending on where you want to classify him as... Uh, positionally speaking, and then Henson is near the bottom um, for matchups. So Giannis is a B plus on FanDuel, B plus on DK, and uh, I like him a ton here. Um, I would expect Giannis to be one of my main studs. He, I'm going to give him a boost just because I think he deserves a boost. It's slight, probably doesn't change. He bumps up to the A minus on DK. Um, yeah, uh, as of right now, Giannis is going to be somebody I want a, a pretty decent part of. Come with a day's rest, playing at home. Rock is coming in off the back to back Oklahoma City. I don't think I'll be in the minority with this opinion, but um, especially with this position being, you know, devoid of talent on a day to day basis, this is a spot where I think Giannis is ready to smash. Plus, it's a big game for the Bucks. Um, you know, while they're almost assuredly going to make the playoffs because of the gap, um, they're still in a quagmire where they can get all sorts of different seeding. So everything matters for both of these teams. Chris Middleton, B plus on FanDuel, C on DK. Uh, he's just overpriced on DraftKings. Um, you're looking for 33 out of him as a baseline on FanDuel. He's only had one major game uh, recently where he went just absolutely crazy. You know, crazy for him, 45 points. Um, I don't mind it. I don't mind the idea of having a couple options coming out of the Bucks. Uh, Middleton gets to the line enough that uh, I hope that that could help him. You know, if we get a day where Houston isn't necessarily as good keeping them from the line. Um... I don't have any qualms with that. Uh, I do want to knock Bledsoe down a little bit. He's not somebody that I would be uh, overly interested in. But 7500 price tag isn't bad. He's coming off of three straight 40-point games. Um, that's really good momentum. I think that he probably runs into a little bit of a wall here. Uh, I, I think his... Uh, his bell curve is a little bit shifted towards the downside for this game. Then Jabari, uh, C minus on FanDuel, but B minus on DK, forty seven hundred dollar price point. Um, you know his his minutes were down a little bit over this last back to back stretch, but they're coming off a day's rest, and this strikes me as the type of game where they would run his minutes up a little bit. Uh, a game against Houston to really you know get some more talent out on the floor. Um, I'd be pretty interested in it, especially because of the way that the Rockets play. If they're going to be getting, you know, a steady dose of like Trevor Ariza or Mba Mute or PJ Tucker, these are guys that are not necessarily uh, creators with the ball in their hand. Um, I think that fits Jabari a little bit more since he is uh, really bad on defense. So if they can hide Jabari uh, on guys spotted in the corner, 
I think that's a benefit and will allow him to get a couple extra minutes in and then do what he does best, which is, you know, be a, a major offensive threat. So I'd like to, I wish that he could be a little bit cheaper on FanDuel, but I really like Jabari tonight. Um, I'd be okay having a bundle of him on DraftKings. I think he's in line for a really nice night. John Henson, um, that's going to be a tricky one. Although, again, the forty-five point price, forty-five hundred dollar price tag on DraftKings is uh, is pretty nice. Um, it's a really tough matchup, but uh, keep an eye on the news for Tyler Zeller. If he's out, uh, it might make Henson a little bit more appealing. I know most of those minutes will just go straight to you know Thon, but it does make uh, the importance of Henson a little bit higher. So that is somebody that I would be I'd be willing to entertain, um, even though the matchup is uh, very difficult. I'll check out those Rockets now. Rockets 111 implied total is fifth, um, six point favorites. They are coming off a of back to back uh, against the Thunder last night. Did pick up the victory uh, on quite the run. I don't remember how many it is right now, but I do want to check it out. Ah, I know Tankathon has it. Yeah, 16 straight. Basically the opposite of the Grizz. Rockets are just... That's the craziest part of it all. The Rockets have won 16 straight. Still only a half came up on Golden State, who have gone 9-1 and one in their last 10. Four teams have gone 9-1 and one in their last 10, with another team going 10-0. So Portland, Boston, Golden State, Houston on quite the heater right now. Or wait, did I read that wrong? Yeah, Portland, Toronto, Golden State, and Houston all on a heater. Um, plus the Pels. Yeah, the top of the top of the league is going kind of nuts right now. So Harden uh, is a B plus on both. Let's take a look at the uh, the matchup ratings. Uh, point guard. Chris Paul with a really difficult matchup. Um, 13 duds against the Bucks so far this year. So that is going to probably take me off of Chris Paul. Um, Harden is in the middle of the pack here. They've had uh, a lot of big games, a lot of duds. Uh, that ring that seems like a really good recipe for a GPP. Um, Ariza, or small forward, is um, you know near the bottom. Power forward, dead last. Twelve duds uh, against the Bucks coming from the power forward position. Um, you would think that would make me want Jabari less, but oddly it doesn't. I don't know why I'm saying it like that. It's the opposite team. I'm, I'm stupid. I definitely don't want P.J. Tucker, but... Knowing that it's Jabari now and not whoever else is probably guarding power forwards um, doesn't really change anything for me. It's not like P.J. Tucker is going to be the, the point of action coming out of uh, the Rockets' offense. I'm losing it this morning. Running on low sleep. Capella in the middle of the pack, and I think that he's going to be pretty interesting too. So Harden on the B plus B plus, I like him a little bit for me in uh, in GPPs. Obviously, we know Harden shoots a ton of free throws. Bucks do have a proclivity for pointing putting people on the line, so that could be a way uh, that we see Harden's score rise, even if he's not necessarily having the best statistical game. They played it all this year. They did. In December, Harden was quiet, 8 of 21. Did get to the line 14 times, so that played out pretty well. Um, but just relatively neutral game for him. And that's sort of how I feel. You know, he that B-plus, I think, rings pretty true. He's not someone that I want to go crazy over. Um, but I don't see necessarily, like, a horrible scenario for him. Um I'd be more than okay having some Harden. I do prioritize Giannis over Harden if we're talking about guys up in that salary echelon, though. 
Uh, Trevor Ariza doesn't seem to be someone I would want to have. Has had back-to-back 30-point games, so, you know, the price is okay for that. Um, Might be an okay punt. It's a six-game slate, so, you know, sometimes you need to make some concessions, but I wouldn't be heavy on him in any way. Uh, Chris Paul, I need to knock down quite a bit. You know, this this is very similar to last night's game for Paul, um, where he did go for 44, which is, you know, all you can ask for. But I just think that there are more likely scenarios below my projection than above it. Um, and for me, I'm trying to maximize the amount of space I can get on the right side of the curve. And I think just because of this matchup, it doesn't lend me to be confident in Chris Paul having a really big game. Um, Capella, though, 7,500. Not a great game last night. I'd like to see how he did last time against them. I hope he played. Certainly did not. (laughs) Lovely. Um... I don't really mind that price point whatsoever. I'd like to think that Capella is just a better version of John Henson. Um, I'll likely have a decent amount of Capella. Uh, and if Capella and Drummond are my two centers, I'm okay with that for tonight. Uh, Bucks give up an inordinate amount of shots at the rim, which, you know... I shouldn't have to tell you is exactly where Capella is going to get his uh, get his goods. So I can see a lot of rim running. My only concern would be if this game were two months ago and Jason Kidd was still the coach, uh, I think Capella would be in an even better spot. Because of the way that they, they blitz pick and rolls, um, I think that's why that they had such a gigantic uh, rim percentage. Um, they were left out of position a lot defensively. And now, since Kid has been canned, um, they have a much more conservative defensive scheme, which allows uh, allows for you know less easy buckets. So that would be my one sort of reservation. But at least on FanDuel, um, I think Capella is in a, a, a primo spot. Eric Gordon, I don't see it. Fifty five hundred is or fifty four hundred is just too much for me. Um, he could sneak into some lineups just because of the short slate, but there's not a ton to be excited about for Gordon. Same for Tucker and Bahamute. Sacramento now. Kings hosting the New Orleans Pelicans. Five and a half point underdogs. They are... They have the seventh highest implied total. Uh, mid, slightly below average matchup for them, but they should be playing at a much higher pace than they normally do. So that is something to keep in mind. Um, so for the Kings, De'Aaron Fox currently has the best matchup at point guard. Um, the Pelicans have given up 10 big games, three monsters, no duds. Uh, so that'll be an interesting focus point. Bogdan is in a great spot. Shooting guards are at third. Uh, Small forward is in the middle of the pack. Nothing to worry about there. Power forward is near the top. Um, Scal is questionable, so that that is a little nerve-wracking. And then uh, even Costa Kufos has got an okay matchup. So first thing I want to do is bump up De'Aaron Fox. Um... I think I probably want to bump up Frank Mason. I think that Heald needs a bump, and Bogdan needs a bump. Sneaky good game for the Kings. So De'Aaron Fox, even with that bump, C+, B-, um, I think he's a very nice value play. I expect to see him a lot when we run this optimizer. Um, 5800 is a, a very solid price. He's coming off of a 16-point game, so I'm hoping that you know people are a little low on him. 
but you know had a bunch of 29 30 34 games recently um, this could be a spot where uh you know he, he really gets some run they've gotten what fifth six you know two full days off heading into this game at home that's nice well rested uh, i feel like the pelicans have been playing every day so i do like De'Aaron fox I love Scal. If we hear that he's going to be playing, it news might be tough to find um, for a ten o'clock start. But uh, I think all signs point to Scal being able to have a really nice game. Last two games, he's been up over thirty, which would be you know perfect from a value perspective. Grades out really well on DraftKings too. A lot of these guys do. Uh, salaries look really good for uh, the Pelicans or for the Kings. Um, Bogdan. C minus and D. Um, his performances have been good. He has been getting himself up into this 30 area. You know, 36 here, 38 here, 38 here, 36 here. So I think the upside is there. Um, I'm a little worried about him. Where's that tab at? I can't see over my microphone. Now I don't remember where it is. Summary. So my projection system is li probably a little low on him. He's been playing uh, really well. I think my, I think he might be regressing a little bit to the mean too strongly. Um, or maybe that's just my way of thinking there's some additional risk here. Because a 21-point game would not be good. Or a two-point game, for that matter. Um and I think those I think those grades are pretty realistic for that price point. I think I would prefer to have Buddy Healed. Fifty six hundred on FanDuel, fifty two hundred on DK, a full twelve hundred dollars cheaper on DraftKings. Um, I think that he just looks sneakier. Uh, I would expect Bogdan's ownership to be significantly higher than Buddy, and I think that makes for a nice sort of. Um, contrarian style pick especially with the way that the pelicans guard uh people at shooting guard a minus might be a little strong but it's just that price it's, it's hard to avoid it you know he's been playing at a points per minute rate that would put him at 28 and a half which is you know really good value um at that price point he's just underpriced on DraftKings. Justin Jackson I will avoid. Um, I think the Costa Kufos looks like a, a really nice value, um, particularly if we find out that Scal is not going to be able to play. Uh, that'll just force a couple extra minutes between Kufos and Zach Randolph. So keep an eye on that for news. Um, if I think that the good part about it is I think that Kufos and Randolph on a six-game slate for FanDuel you know, could be worked into some lineups. And there's a ton of upside in that if Scal gets scratched late because they're going to get a boost in minutes almost by default. Oddly enough, I like the Kings tonight. But the Pels, 114.75 implied total. Five and a half point favorites. Um, third best matchup on the slate. Uh, Kings have the second worst team defense behind the Bulls on the season, so... It should come as no surprise that the Pelicans are going to look pretty tasty. Um, they are coming off the back-to-back, -back, which I feel like they only play nowadays. So back-to-back -back here. Well, maybe I'm just wrong, and I just feel like, yeah, this stretch got me. 23rd, 25th, 26th, 28th. Um, they did have that nice uh, gap there at the beginning of March. AD was AD again. You know, 73 fantasy points. Drew went crazy. Let's take a look at the matchups. Uh, Mid-tier for Rondo, nothing big, but no real negatives. Uh, Drew actually near the bottom, uh, five duds. Um, nobody has really gone off from the shooting guard position, so that is something to keep in mind. Uh, Eton Moore, relatively, you know, a little below average, no duds. Should be pretty safe. Uh, AD, middle of the pack, not that I need any reason I'm going to be smashing him as will everyone else. And uh, if you want to get weird, Mecca Okafor's got the best matchup on the board. If you want to take a time machine back to 2007, that'll be really good news.
So AD, B plus on both. Holy shit, he's 13,000 on FanDuel. Good God. That's going to be tough to pull off unless we get some news. There's not a lot of low-end value out there. Um, oh, boy. Look, he's 1,300 for a reason. The dude has been nuts. And, I mean, nobody on the Kings is going to stop him. So, yeah, look. I think the, the grade is very appropriate. I think lineup builds might be a little difficult with him. We'll see when the optimizer runs and see how much he comes up. But on a short slate, well, like a relatively short slate, um, without any major news, it's going to be tough to fit him in as much as you would like. Drew at the B minus C plus 8,500 on FanDuel. Uh, I think he's really a safe play for cash tonight. Um, it might be hard to get a lot of upside here just because of you know Sacramento's history against shooting guards, but uh, it's going to be pretty hard for him to have a bad game. Etom Moore, um, I think the D plus probably doesn't do him enough justice. I'd be comfortable giving him a little bit of a boost. He's in a pretty solid spot. And at 4,300, he should be able to get some shots up. Came out with a you know a monster 33-point game. If you get that at uh, that price point, you're very happy. You know, I think that's the a B minus is like the perfect way to describe Rondo in fantasy. Uh, you're always you know there are nights where things go great and you wonder why doesn't he get an A, and then there are nights where you're just like, you must have been out drinking last night. I'm surprised you salvaged a B minus. <laughs> um. He's been good, and he's been getting a lot more minutes lately, and he's been playing in the fourth quarter. And uh, he should have no problem against the Kings, so I'm comfortable there. I'm going to have a bunch of this game. It's probably my favorite game that we've looked at, and it will probably be the favorite game that I look at. Denver hosting the Cleveland Cavaliers. Um... Nuggets 116.75 implied total, second on the night, two and a half point favorites, and Denver has the number one matchup. Cavs defense still not very good. Uh, we should expect a ton of points here. This is going to be fun. So, Denver, Jamal Murray, right at the top of the heap um, in terms of matchup, third from the top, but it's a little bit different now. Um, it's not... IT or Derrick Rose or whoever else put up all of this. But, you know, George Hill is a legit defender. So I'm not as crazy over the point guard defensive ratings as I normally would be. Mid tier for shooting guard. Um, small forward. Way at the top. And that one I would be a little bit interested in. Same for Paul Millsap and power forward top of the heap and then finally we get center Jokic in the middle nobody has gone absolutely crazy against them we might see that happen tonight Gary Harris D plus C plus that makes sense to me um, 7200 is a pretty uh, pretty lofty price tag on FanDuel looks a lot better on DK um, you know, Will Barton's been super steady lately, but like that $7,900 price point is just too high, in my opinion. Um, looks a lot better on DraftKings. I don't really have any tweaks that I want to make there. I would be okay bumping Jamal Murray a little bit. Um, I think a D is, uh, well, still appropriate, but I just don't see a ton of upside there. Said it from the beginning. He's a different player with Paul Millsap on the floor. He appears to take the biggest. Uh, he appears to have the biggest issue with it. Jokic at 9,700, 9,100 on DK. Um, I think this could be a big time Jokic night. He's been quiet these past four games, all with Millsap back conveniently, coming off of a 50, 75, 50, 50. And then all of a sudden, Millsap gets back and the offense changes. This could be the spot where that opens back up again. 
um, no Tristan Thompson. So it's basically just, you know, uh, Larry Nance and Ante Zizic to try to slow down Jokic. If Jokic asserts himself, um, he should be in line for a really monster night. Uh, I'm going to have a bunch of Jokic. Yeah. Wilson Chandler, grading out as an F. He's just too expensive for me. Um, I'm willing to give him a boost simply because of the matchup. But it's not as if he's going to suddenly be the greatest thing in the world. He'll probably get worked in a little bit because of the lack of games, but I'm going to avoid it. What I'm not going to avoid is Paul Millsap. Millsap, 6,900 on FanDuel, 6,100 on DK. Uh, he's a B here, but A-, minus, and I completely agree with it. Um, he's been very solid, only played 20 minutes last night, which I think is going to be very key. Um, I would expect him to get you know, all the run that he can basically handle tonight. Uh, this is the kind of game you have him for, and uh, I like it a lot. I would smash the hell out of him on DraftKings, and I'll have a, a large amount of him on uh, FanDuel, or at least I believe that I will. Cavs. Uh, we'll take a quick look here. <sighs> Nothing special from the point guard position. It's definitely below average. We're smack dab in the middle here for shooting guards. Uh, if we're considering Rodney Hood a small forward, he's got an okay spot. Um, Braun is a little low. Nine duds, um, which is not as appealing. And then Larry Nance is uh, buried here in the middle from a matchup standpoint. Lots of big games, but also duds. And considering I'm going to be smashing him in uh, GPPs, that's fine by me. What did they jump his salary to? Holy hell. Larry Nance, Larry Nance. Is he power forward? Oh, morons. Morons, morons, morons. Okay, so he went from 5,800 to 7,500, so they can, they can suck one. All right, LeBron, 12-5 on FanDuel, 11-4. I think that those... Uh, I think that those ratings are, are perfectly acceptable. I'm not a, you know, they're, they're playing in Denver, late game. I know they're coming in with some rest, so that's okay. But, you know, the altitude's real. And uh, this doesn't feel like a game where LeBron is just going to go absolutely bananas. Larry Nance, though, still a B plus, A minus on DraftKings. I love it. Um, I wish that his price was still a little bit lower. Uh, but he's going to be very involved, and that's really all you can ask for. He's not going to go for 47 again, or at least I would be very surprised. Um, but I don't have much problem using him. They don't really have much choice. After that, you know, it's nobody is really asserting themselves. You know, you've got Chetty and Corver, Jeff Green potentially back. Um, you know, J.R., Rodney Hood, George Hill. It's hard to parse out. You got Jordan Clarkson. Like, none of these guys are just going crazy. They're all just low-level guys. You know, you'd want, like, 2% of all of them spread out because any one of them can be the guy that gets hot and stays out there. They've just got too many options that negatively impact you for fantasy. Um, so, yeah, you know, I'd look at Braun and Nance. I prefer Giannis to LeBron for sure. Um, I prefer AD to both for sure. Well, I prefer AD to LeBron. I th I think I'd rather uh, err on the side of Giannis and the non thirteen thousand dollar price tag. Final game: uh, Lakers and Magic. Lakers one sixteen point seven five implied total, seven point favorites at home. Uh, it's the number two implied total. They've got the second best matchup. Uh, kind of excited to look at this here. So, let's do it. KCP should get a ton of minutes, which is great for people on DraftKings and less great for people on FanDuel. $1,500 difference in his price point. Um, not expecting to see Brandon Ingram tonight. He is uh, going to be out at least tonight. So, you know, KCP is still going to be getting those heavy minutes. Um... D plus is probably a little aggressive. Let's take a look at the matchups quick. 
All right, point guard number two. That makes me really interested to look at Lonzo. Uh, KCP firmly in the middle. Kuzma with an exceptional matchup. Randall a bit towards the bottom, which is a little surprising considering that's mostly Aaron Gordon. And then uh, Brolo or Randall near the bottom. So let's go ahead and bump up Lonzo quite a bit. Uh, and I want to bump up Kuzma a bit. I mean, I'd have no problem saying Kentavious Caldwell Pope is someone you want a ton of on DraftKings. I'll be a little bit more muted on him on FanDuel, but at the same time, with the amount of guys in the slate, I can see uh, running him out a bit. I think Randall's perfectly acceptable value. Price is a little high, though. 8600 is lofty. Feels really safe for cash, though. Um, I think I'm going to have like a really overwhelming amount of Lonzo. 8000 on FanDuel, 7400 on DK. You know, good matchup. Fills the stat sheet. Um, coming off some rest, I'm happy to go big time on Lonzo. And I'm going to go really, really, really big time on Kuzma. Um, 6100 FanDuel, 6100 DK, B plus on FanDuel. Um, Kuzma will be, as of right now, Kuzma will be one of my higher owned guys because of that price point. I think you're perfectly fine running Isaiah out there. Much better on DK though. Lakers prices on DK are just phenomenal. Um, there's going. I'm going to have a lot of exposure to the Lakers. Each one of these guys almost. Finally, we get to the Magic. Uh, Mid-tier for point guard. Slightly below average at shooting guard. Second at small forward, so we'll take a look at Jonathan Simmons in depth. Um, Aaron Gordon's got a, a perfectly reasonable matchup. And uh, Vooch, also perfectly reasonable matchup. Lots of duds, though, so something to be aware of. Um I'm going to bump up Jonathan Simmons just a little bit. But we're looking at Aaron Gordon first. Um, 7,600 and 7,600. He's really not in a bad spot on FanDuel. Under 8,000 makes me happy. You know, he's a guy that can go for 50 plus. And they're playing the Lakers, who, you know, aren't exactly like a defensive, a crazy defensive team. Uh, Orlando should be playing in a pace up game. Uh, so I think that, and this is rare for me because I'm generally anti Aaron Gordon. I like Aaron Gordon. Um, like a pretty solid amount. Fournier, uh, you know, I could take it or leave it. Um, you're basically betting on a, a shot to fall. Uh, I don't really mind him in cash. I don't see a ton of upside in GPPs. Uh, DJ Augustine is, a, you know, a great value point guard, but I don't think that he's going to wow you with anything. Um, feels pretty safe. Vooch is in a really good spot. Um, if he's going to get minutes, I don't think that he has much issue... Uh, with Julius Randle or with um, Brooke Lopez. Seven monster or seven big games, which is appealing. That's a really good score for center. Six duds, so I think that looks very good for me in a GPP scenario. I'd be okay having a bunch of Vooch because I think that there's a bunch of upside there. You know, if you can get him on one of those nights where, well, he's been pretty quiet since he's been back. Steady, but quiet. Um, I feel like the Lakers are uh, are a good team to try to have a little bit of a coming out party against. Just all depends how much Orlando wants this game. Jonathan Simmons at 4,200 in a really good matchup. <clears throat> I think that he will be a, a nice small forward punt play. Does dial it up sometimes, gets up to like 40s or 30s, and at 4,200, you don't need much more than that. You know, 30 would suffice. So yeah, that's, uh, that's a look through the grades and some of my thoughts. Um, it's a tough slate. 
Uh, some value would be very nice uh, because I think that a lot of this is compact and it's going to be tricky to find out you know how to best fit these pieces. It honestly feels a little bit like last night where um, we're going to end up with a lot of weird dudes that had big nights. So let's change that, bump the rando to 10 and let's run it. So there you see a lot of uh, Jonathan Simmons. And by a lot of Jonathan Simmons, I mean in all of the lineups. So keep that in mind for tonight. So obviously he's going to be in these lineups. Um, I definitely like the idea of using Kuzma. We see Giannis here at the top, which makes me happy. So I will grab him. And if I just chop that down to the Lonzo game, you know, I'd be a little nervous about this one, um, particularly if Scal is out. But at the same time, if he is, you can safely, if you get the news early enough, you can safely just drop down to Zebo and be more than okay with it. Or 6,100, so you can get up to 64. Yeah, I would just drop down to Zebo in that case if I got the news early enough. But I really like that lineup. Um, has a lot of guys that I think are in, in line for potentially big nights. And then on DK, do the same thing. Uh, no live stream tonight with the, the staggered locks and the late lock for FanDuel. I'm going to be a good husband and cook a nice dinner tonight. Wife's been a little sick for the past two days, so it seems like the least I can do for her putting up with the fact that I spend the first hour and a half I get home from work every night with uh, with all of you guys <laughs> instead of her. So we'll be back Thursday night for lock. All right, here's DK. So, Vooch, Nance, Millsap, Buddy, Healed. No surprises there. Well, Vooch a little bit. Nance, Buddy, Healed. Millsap down here, Vooch down here. Any B pluses that I really like? I think AD. If you get to AD there, kind of pulls Vooch and... You get to a Millsap lineup. Fox healed Parker, AD, Brooke Lopez, Isaiah Thomas, Paul Millsap, Larry Nance Jr. I don't really mind that lineup at all. I probably like this one more. De'Aaron Fox, Buddy Heal, KCP with a much better price. And that gets Jonathan Simmons in there. Price isn't as good on DK, but... I like those lineups in, in uh, GPPs. I'm actually really excited now. Now that I see this stuff, um, I'm going to get my focus in on like two or three guys, or like, you know, two guys at each position, hope for the best. And uh, I'm pretty confident in some of that stuff. So I'll have updates throughout the day. Projections will constantly stay updated. If you have any questions for me, you know, hit me up in the comments or on Twitter or on Reddit. Um, like and subscribe if you're cool with this. Um, I hope people are getting used to the grades. Uh, it's really, it makes my life so much easier to not worry about setting up those tiers. Um, you just got to remember, they're just a guidepost for the value of people's projection and their salary. Um, just because a guy's a C plus and someone's a C, don't go crazy over that. It's really just meant to give you an easier way to look at a group of people. I said this on uh, on the Reddit yesterday. I think it's a decent analogy. Um, you know, you know, a lot of people back in high school that got A's on things didn't necessarily mean they were smart. Um, just sort of meant they were prepared. Um, and I say that as someone who got a lot of C's. Uh, it wasn't because I couldn't get an A. It was because I didn't care. <laughs> so 
just because a guy is a C doesn't necessarily mean um, he's not a really good play. Just means that, you know, he's got an interesting, you know, he's not as super valuable on a dollar for dollar perspective. It's just a way to bucket guys to give a little bit easier of a look. Instead of having 12 guys here at tier 3, 12 guys here at tier 4, you know, you get a little bit more of a delineation um, and see, like, okay, you know, I'm going to focus on Paul Bledsoe, Ball, to start. You know, maybe Jamal Murray isn't the guy that I want to look at right out of the gate. It's, it's just meant to be that simple. It's an ingredient. It's not the main course. I love you guys, and I will see you in the morning.